From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. You've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan back for more wisdom for life. Hello again, my dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bag, and we're on the Wisdom for Life broadcast. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home. It really is an awesome privilege to meet with you this way every day, to know that we can gather around God's Word and experience the fullness of what He has for us. We've been having a look at Romans 15, verse 29, where Paul says, I know that I've come to you. When I get there, I'll be walking in the fullness of the blessing." Hallelujah. That's the blessing without measure. And that has been released into the earth. God has given it and ordained it as a promise. And we are receiving it. And I'm showing us now how through the Word of God, the Word of God is teaching us how we can walk in the authority as believers in the fullness of that blessing and see it manifest in our lives in a way that it's going to produce everything that God designed for man to walk in. We've already had a look this week. When God created man, he put him in this earth and gave him full dominion, gave him the full authority, placed everything under his feet. And Satan came along and he stole that thing and through high treason, Adam let it go. But praise God, Jesus came back. He came to this earth as a man, destroyed Satan, died the death that all of us should have died because of that curse, redeemed us from the curse so that the blessing may come upon us, and then rose from the dead. We read in Ephesians. Let's go and read that again. This is a phenomenal scripture. If we can understand this and get revelation of it, I, I just want to encourage you. You know, so often the first time we hear something, it is so big that it just kind of just, you know, blows out every thought that we've had before, you know, all our religious traditional thinking. We kind of look at something and go, wow, can that be true? Is that possible? I want to encourage you to go back and you study it again. You get those tapes, the CD, you listen to it over and over and over. Once you understand that you're walking in that authority, the devil doesn't have authority over you. But if you don't put these things into action, it's not even the devil that will deceive us. We deceive ourselves. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I keep meditating in this. Say, not only do I have the authority, not only do you say, amen, praise God, this is good news, but actually start to exercise that authority. It is vitally important. I'm telling you now, particularly in the, in the times and seasons that we're living in today, when you think about what is happening in South Africa and every nation, but uh, obviously with us being here in South Africa, we look at how this nation Seems like the devil's out to get it. He's trying everything he can do through corruption, through politics, through crime, murder, through rape, through all kinds of tragedies. He's trying to rape this nation, try to strip it. I'm telling you now, it's useless us trying to moan and complain about our leaders, trying to hold rallies. The devil's not scared of a placard. I mean, a piece of paper with paint on it doesn't scare him. The thing that scares the devil is the word of God. The thing that he cannot combat is when someone stands in his face and says, It is written. He does not have anything to stand against. Jesus came against him with, It is written. He did not say to the devil, Excuse me, I am God. No, he was a man on this earth. But he knew his right as a man. He knew his authority as a man. And he knew the power of the word of God. He said, It is written. He stood up against the devil. And the Bible says the devil left him. For a more opportune time. What's that more opportune time? It's when Jesus is not so strong on the word. The devil will do everything he can to try and strip that word out of you. He'll try to get you to forget who you are and take away the authority that belongs to you as a believer. But not as long as you're listening to the word of God. Not as long as you tuned into this program, getting the CDs. You are filled with the faith of God's word. You're filled with the power of the anointing. You're filled with the authority of Jesus Christ. And it's time to stand up in this nation as believers and say to the devil, this far 
and no further. This country does not belong to you. Africa does not belong to the devil. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm telling you now, if, if the believers in Jesus Christ would stand up and not through open uh, combat, not through... Let me show you why we're here in Ephesians. Just keep your mark here. We're coming right back. Ephesians chapter 6. Well, before we do that, let's read Ephesians 1. Let's, I just want to show you this. Have a look here. Uh, verse 19, Paul prays that we would know the greatness of this power that works towards us according to the power which he worked in Christ. When he raised him from the dead, he seated him where? Far at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, all power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, every name that is named. He's far above, far above, far above. Not just above, not just barely beat them. He's far above all might and dominion. And he put all things under his feet. He gave him to bed over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That's you. You are the church. You are that fullness. Now listen, he's the head, we the church. We already discussed that. We the body, he's the head. We are one with him. And you he made alive. Look at that chapter 2. Come down to verse 4. God is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. Verse 6, he raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places. Do you recognize the terminology there? Yes, yeah, the same terminology as in verse uh, 20. He raised him at his right hand. So that's you. You saw that. He made us sit together. Where? At the right hand. That's you. And where's that? Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Now with that in mind, come to Ephesians chapter 6. Have a look here. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That's that power that He released, yeah? When Jesus was raised from the dead, that power, Paul prays that we would know that power. Verse 11, he says, Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles is the schemings, the working out, the plans. Look at verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now there is where so many Christians have made their mistake. Your boss is not your problem. Your wife and your husband, your spouse, is not your problem. The leaders of this country are not our problem. People think if we can get him out and put that man in, everything will be fine. Listen, same devils there. Same demons will get to work at that man. Just as sure as corruption was allowed in that one man, he'll get corruption to work in another man. You take a corrupted man out, you put another man in, the devil immediately begin to work on him and get him to fall to corruption. Unless that man knows how to stand against the devil. Because corruption, theft, stealing, murder, all these things are influences of Satan, demons. And he says our warfare is not against flesh and blood. The arguments you have with people, the disagreements, the, the falling outs you have with people is not because people are that way. Demons have influenced people to do that. And so you may say, well, I just don't get on with my wife. She's no good. I don't want to anymore. Dump the wife and get another woman. Those demons will just jump off her and get on this one. You have exactly the same problems. You, gotta, you understand what I'm saying here? Now, of course, we shouldn't give in to demons. Sure enough, the person should not be doing that. But your authority is not over people. When God gave Adam authority, he didn't give him authority over mankind. He gave him authority over the earth and everything that moves in it. The devil is one of those things that moves on the earth. Your authority is over the devil. Now, recognize that and start to walk in those things. And so what we do is we use the word of God and we start to attack the demonic spirits, the wickedness, those that are working in the heavenly places. In other words, we tear down corruption. We tear down murder. We tear down all these acts. We speak the authorities. Stop it. You will not be allowed in my town. You will not be allowed in my country. 
And that's exactly where the Bible says in James 4, 7, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, you can't resist people. They'll just fight right back. I'm sure you've noticed that. You fight against the devil. See, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 tells us to be sober, to be vigilant. Vigilant means be aware, be alert. Why? The adversary, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now that tells me he can't devour everybody. He's looking for the person that is giving in to the work and the influences of the devil. So he, he shows up in your life. He'll test you out. He'll put problems against you. He'll challenge you with uh, persecution, tribulation. He'll, he'll cause a few hassles in your life. And all he's doing is he's prodding and testing are you somebody he can devour? And I'm telling you, I've seen it happen so often. When Christians say, oh, I don't know what's happening to my life. Oh, I've lost everything. I'm sick. My business has failed. It's finished. It's over. Right now, the devil has found someone he can devour. He'll move right into that place. He'll, he'll, he'll jump in there. But remember, Jesus gave us authority. Come and have a look here. Luke chapter 10. This is where we left off yesterday. I just want to read it to you again. Luke chapter 10. I'm telling you there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, hmm, there is such an anointing. I just want to pray for you right now. The devil has tried to attack your life and try to hurt you. And I tell you, there is such a burden on this ministry as partners. I take our partnership seriously. I'm praying for you every day, just as Jesus prayed for Peter. Let your faith not fail you. The devil comes like a roaring lion. He's seeking to sift you. Don't give up on the word. Stay on the word. Take these things. Take the CDs. Listen to them. Get it into your heart over and over and over. So when the devil comes, you can stand up against that thing. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you live in victory. Let me pray for you. Father, I bless my partner right now. Mm, in the name of Jesus. Father, bless him. 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 Devil, you have no right or authority in that home. I reject your work in the name of Jesus. We settle it now on the basis of God's word. We bind your work in the name of Jesus. We come against every curse you try to bring in that home. That family has been redeemed from the curse so that the blessing of Abraham may come upon them. And Father, I release that word. I resist the devil. Flee in Jesus' name, you foul demons. Now, Father, I release your blessing in that home. I release your anointing in the name of Jesus. I call my friends blessed. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Man, I just had such a strong burden right there. I believe you're free. I believe you're free now. Hold on, hold on to it. Uphold that word. Look at Luke 10 verse 19. Jesus says, I give you, I give you the authority to trample on demons and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Get a hold of that. Jesus has handed you the authority. Nothing can hurt you. Learn to walk in these things. Amen. Now, uh, to add to that, Jesus also said, he told us that uh, we've been given full authority. Now come and have a look here at Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, the keys talk about authority. He says, I'm going to give you the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Now remember, at this time, when he talks to them, they not yet raised from, they not yet born again. He hasn't been, yet been raised from the dead. So they're not yet born again. But when he was raised, that's where he said, all authority has been given to me, now go. It was on the basis of what he said here. He says, I'm going to give you this authority, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, only what we bind, in other words, what we stop, what we disallow, heaven will disallow. What we allow on earth, heaven allows. And so if there's things in our neighborhoods that we're not happy with, we're the ones that have allowed it, and heaven is allowing it on that basis of what Jesus said. So what we need to do now is take back that authority. How do we do that? 
with the word of God. You start speaking the word of God. You address Satan the same way Jesus did. It is written. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn. This is our heritage as a servant of God. My righteousness is from you, Lord. And so now you take that authority that any assignment raised against you, you cancel. Right now, you just say, every assignment, say it with me, every assignment raised against me, every evil assignment raised against me, I cancel in the name of Jesus. Right there, it's done. Now say this, say it. I submit to God. I have resisted you, devil. I consider you fled in the name of Jesus. Now you say it. That's exactly how you say it. Now when the devil tries to come back with that same attack, you say, no, you fled. You are fled. You stay out my garden. Out loud. Say it out loud. Remember Jesus said, you have what you say out loud. You declare, no, I've resisted you. You are fled in Jesus' name. When the news comes up and they say, oh, uh, crime has just gone up. Rape is on the increase. You stop it there. You say, I bind that in the name of Jesus. I take those words captive. And I release the blessing of God into this country. And I declare rape, you get out. You drop right now and leave this country. In Jesus' name, you are fled. I promise you, family, if we can raise up an army of believers that are walking in this authority and speaking this way, it'll turn this country around. I mean, you don't even have to change the leaders. God will turn that leader around. That heart will be turned. I'm telling you, we're going to see leaders coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And this country coming to serve Jesus. I see it happening all the way through the continent of Africa. A great revival burst because believers have stood up and are walking in the authority that they have in the blessing. That blessing is alive once again. That blessing is at work in this country. It's at work in this continent. It is at work in this, in this, in this world. It's time for you as a believer to walk in a good way. Let's walk together in the authority that we have in the blessing of God. I've got a vital message to share with you now concerning your seed and walking in this authority of the blessing. Don't miss it. I'll be with you right after we have a look at this. See you there. If you have authority, things happen. God created you to reign in life. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you are restored as a son of God. Once you know it, you cannot imagine how you could have actually lived before without it. If you're tired of always getting the same results, or if you're unhappy about the way life is treating you, then this series of teaching will definitely change your life. Packed with revelation and practical teaching, the series will transform the way you think, shedding light on who you are in Christ, what you are capable of, as well as practical ways to help you have God's power working through you. To have this key to walking in the dominion you were called to, your authority as a believer is a powerful series. Accept and receive the authority that you already have as a believer. Get this series today and see your faith rise to new levels. Your life will never be the same when you understand your authority as a believer. Now as it is Friday, we get together around the Word of God, around the offering. Because many people so into this ministry and I don't want to ever be in a place where we just take people's money. That's not the purpose of it. You've partnered with us. There is a harvest due to you because of your sowing of seed. And I want to make sure that that manifests in your life. And we know that Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the very fact that you've taken time and the effort to sow into this ministry obligates me as your partner to ensure that you have word on the issue, that you can believe God and it's not just money thrown away, but that it's working for you to re reproduce in your life what you're believing for. Let me show this to you in Genesis chapter 12. God appeared to Abraham and said, verse 1, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Look at verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. Listen to verse 3. I'll bless those who bless you. He says, I'll curse those who curse you. In other words, if you come against that blessing, 
I mean, that thing turns out as a curse. You want to be on the blessing side. Look at the next statement. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Because of you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'm telling you, this word through Wisdom for Life is reaching families around this planet. This ministry is preaching in countries all over this world. And so through us, all families are being blessed. Now, as you are a blessing so that we can be a blessing and we bless you and you bless us. You see how this thing all fits together? As your household is blessed, then you bless us. Then we get out to preach the gospel. That means through you, because you've sown seed into this ministry, we were able to go and preach the gospel to someone else. Through you, all nations are blessed. And it all began with the seed. Now, why does it work through seed? Come and have a look at Genesis chapter 26. And God spoke to Abraham, uh, spoke to Isaac. Isaac, there was a famine in the land, verse 1. And so Isaac was ready to go down for, for relief. And then God says to him, verse 2, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I tell you. Dwell in this land. I'll be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give these lands. And I swore this oath to your father Abraham. In other words, when God blessed Abraham, as we've just read now, that blessing hell still holds fast for all time. So he's telling Isaac, I'm going to bless you because of that blessing. And so verse 4, all your, I'll make your seed multiply as the stars, and I'll give to your descendants these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commands, my statutes, my law, my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. What did he do? He sowed seed. And reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper. Verse 13. Continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now I know there are people, even teaching on television now, that the blessing's not about the money. That's true. It's not about only the money, but there is a financial aspect to it. Why? Because it costs money to get the gospel around the earth. It takes finances to teach people to get the word. God's blessing is a spiritual blessing and it's a natural blessing. You read the Bible. You go study it out. You will see every time a man of God honored God, you see the blessing shows up in his life and he prospers in the natural realm. Why? So that he can be able to take that blessing. It's useless me being here in Cape Town with all the anointing and the ability to raise people from the dead and speak life and, and yet I'm stuck here. We've got to get this word out. We've got to get to as many people as possible. And it is through the sowing of seed that the blessing activates in my life and in your life. And as you sow your seed, you begin to prosper. You continue prospering until you're very prosperous. Now, that blessing manifests in the natural so that you can be a blessing and through you all nations are blessed. Hallelujah. I wanted you to see that. So the seed that you're sowing today, I want to thank you for it. I'm going to pray over you now. Believe God that that blessing manifests in your life. Father, I thank you for my dear friend, a partner as they begin to sow their seed. Lord, that that blessing manifests in their life. I call them blessed in the name of Jesus. Blessed to be a blessing. And now, even now, that blessings at work in their life. They begin to prosper, continue prospering until they are very prosperous. I thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're blessed. And there are the details on the screen as the Lord has led you to do that. I trust and believe God with you. That blessing will continue manifesting. I'm going to stay in agreement with you. Now, it is the weekend. And so it's time for each and every one of us to meet in our places of worship. I want to encourage you. Don't just sit at home. Go down to a place of worship. Meet with the saints. Gather together. If you're in Cape Town, come and visit us. Come and join us. There are the details on the screen. I'd love to meet you personally. And I look forward to seeing you there. 
Until next week, this is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church meeting in many locations. If you are in the Cape Town area this weekend and would like to meet with us at one of our locations, join us and be part of the great times in God's powerful presence. For any information regarding our services, please call us on 0800 Wisdom or visit us online at www.allenbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries has made this week's Wisdom for Life programs available on CD and DVD. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can.